Greetings. I'm Dr. Jason Ozupo from the psychology department at SUNY Geneseo. And today I'd like to tell you about the video game that I made in PsychoPie. So let me preface all of this today by saying, of course, PsychoPie is a serious tool for serious research. However, I've done a lot with it over the years, and I've often wondered how far could you actually push PsychoPie? So at its heart, PsychoPie is really just an interface and a set of libraries and a system that sort of sits on top of Python. And Python is a real programming language that you can use to build all kinds of software. So at some level, the question of could you build a video game in PsychoPie is self-evidently yes. However, PsychoPie is a system that sits on top of Python and so may carry overhead and may slow things down in certain ways. Um, it turns out PsychoPie does a really good job of not doing this. But nonetheless, I wanted to know how complex a game, how complex an experiment, how complex a program could you actually make in PsychoPie? So let's get right to the chase and actually run this experiment so you can see Super Science Bros in action and you can see just how advanced you can actually get with PsychoPie. And off we go. So Super Science Brothers is obviously a Super Mario style clone. It is a fully functioning video game with enemies, levels, power-ups, worlds to explore. There's even a boss at the end. Um, and this is free for you to download. In order to actually play the game, you simply need to have a copy of PsychoPie installed because it is a PsychoPie experiment, believe it or not. Um, the controls are pretty simple. Left goes left, right goes right, spacebar jumps. And if you do need to duck, down ducks. Um, everything you see here, uh, I made. Um, it was all programmed from scratch in PsychoPie. Um, and the only thing that was really um, sort of borrowed uh, from appropriate uh, Creative Commons sources is uh, the music, uh, which took a little hunting to find the right music to uh, uh, match the, the tone of the game that I was going for. So that was level one. Um, there's eight levels to explore. I won't play them all. I'll leave a little bit of mystery here for you. But uh, yeah, feel free to go ahead and download this game and try it out for yourself. But uh, for us, let's return to the code and uh, I can uh, give you a little bit more background on what is actually happening in PsychoPie in order to make a literal video game. So if you download Super Science Bros and open it up in PsychoPie, it'll be presented with uh, the README file, um, which will contain all sorts of good information. But here's what you're probably actually interested in. Uh, how is this game actually running in PsychoPie? And I'm planning to make a follow-up video where I go through all of this uh, in a more specific and more technical detail. But for today, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of what is actually in PsychoPie here. Um, that's uh, running this game. So as I said at the start of today's video, PsychoPie is really a wrapper, an API that sits on top of uh, Python and gives you power to the axis of Python. So of course, if we had wanted, we could have gone in, I could have gone in to the, the, the code review in PsychoPie and literally just written a video game completely in code. But again, that's not what I wanted to do here. This is less about making a video game, more about exploring the boundaries of PsychoPie and what you can actually do. So I wanted to build as much of this game in the builder as I could. And so you'll see here, there is an actual uh, timeline. There is a flow here. And we have different routines that are set up. Now the routines do heavily rely on code. So there's lots of custom code in here as you would imagine you would need if you were to program a video game. Um, however, um, especially things like loading in maps, loading in things which are power-ups or enemies, loading in, uh, so this is the world palette, so think of the blocks that make up a Mario world, um, loading in a script which uh, is executed during the boss fight. So loading in all of this stuff um, was done pretty much how you would load in any stimuli. Um, in PsychoPie, um, if you were to use uh, a loader loop. 
So there's an Excel sheet that we're referring to, and then we iterate through the loop, and we simply uh, save things, save variables from the loop. And we do a bit of processing here as well on certain items. But I think especially for um, loading in blocks that make up the world, we're really just grabbing different parameters um, that are coming from Excel sheets. And so if we were to actually look in the files that you get with Super, uh, Super Science Bros, there's a sheets folder that contains a series of Excel sheets. And these are basically your condition files in an experiment. Only instead of containing information about stimuli, this now contains information about video game objects. So you can see um, these are the different blocks that make up a world. And in fact, you'll find an Excel sheet for each of the levels in the game. And if you were to open it up, you'll see that basically the Excel sheet is just a series of variables that um, have a code that refers to a block from our block list. And that's really as complicated as it needed to be in order to, uh, to build, um, essentially, I, I guess, a map editor in Excel, if you want to think of it that way. So these are all the condition files that uh, run the game. And here's a little... Uh, tip for you if you do play the game and you're having trouble beating a certain level the map order list shows you all the maps that you will play in that order you can go ahead and you could delete a level if you wanted uh, you could also go ahead and take a level that you wanted to try and put it to the start of the list and that will be level one so uh, there you go a little secret uh, for cheating at super science bros you can also edit the levels if you want just come in here and uh, you know if you the so grubby is an enemy if you copy a grubby here and put one there, then if we run the game next, then there will be a grubby walking on top of this platform. So you can copy enemies and blocks and whatever you'd like. So that's how everything gets loaded in. It's simply reading a series of Excel files. Uh, then there's some work that needs to be done in order to read in the maps, which are a little more complicated. And then comes uh, the single routine that runs the entire game. And so this is one routine with a lot of coding objects because a lot needs to happen in a Mario style game. Um, for anyone who's, you know, never thought about it in too much detail, you know, a Mario game is a really simple physics simulation and uh, objects have to move and be able to bump into each other. And so you need to uh, move items in small steps and look for object collisions. And then certain collisions have certain interactions. A player, inter a player collides with a block, they stop moving player collides with the enemy, they might get damaged. Unless they land on top of the enemy, then they damage the enemy. Um, a player hits a power-up, they get powered up and things like that. Um, so there's various uh, code objects here. You know, one for the game script, one for the boss, one for dialogue, uh, one for keyboard, one for the world. You know, and this will build all the blocks and everything that make up the world. One for the player, one for the camera. And so if you think in a Mario game, as you move across the world, the camera scrolls, um, so to speak, even though it technically stays at the center of the screen, uh, really the world scrolls around Mario. Um, and so that's what's happening in the camera and so on. Um, and then come all the things you see on the screen. So if you look into this routine, you will find that there are 200 um, image blocks and then there are 30 image sprites. And then there's a handful of other items. So some text items and things we want to display on the screen. And, you know, you, pro you might be able to push this even further. But truthfully, um, I tried to make the game as complicated as I could and reach the upper limit of when it would start to lag and get a little too slow. And uh, so you might not be able to push things too much further. But... Think of it like this. We have over 200 images that are being used dynamically to show the Mario world. And the images are being reused and shuffled around as, uh, as we play through the game. And all of that is happening um, at least 120 times a second, which is pretty phenomenal when you think about all the work that PsychoPy is doing in order to shuffle things around to play this game. So um, anyway, that, that is our overview for today. Um, Super Science Bros is the game. It is free to download. It is free to distribute. The only thing is, you know, leave the original authorship and all that if you do decide to pass it around. It is a proof of concept demo showing you one of the more complex things you can do in PsychoPie and demonstrating that 
you know, despite the fact that you probably have some overhead from using this interface and the menus and all that, PsychoPie is still a powerful tool that has more than enough horsepower to run almost any experiment you could conceive of. Even if for some reason you conceive of a Mario style video game as your experiment. Anyway, I hope today has been interesting and educational. If you are interested in the nuts and bolts of how this game actually works, do keep an eye out for the follow-up video uh, that I'll be making where I go through the code in a lot more detail and show you exactly how you build a, a Mario-style game um, in PsychoPie, of course. Um, but I should also mention, too, that when I'm not busy building video games in PsychoPie, I do offer actual consulting services for real experiments. So if you are a researcher working on a PsychoPie project or a Pavlovia project and you need help, uh, you need something built or programmed, or you just need some consulting help, feel free to contact me. Uh, my uh, information is in the description of this video. But other than that, let me leave you with a little bit of gameplay from Super Science Bros. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.